The role of consumer and consumer awareness is pivotal and that's why this, uh, this topic is, is quite important in terms of being almost an enabler to uh, reclassification and to switch. All right, so uh, just to set the, t the scene, in Australia everything that sits in uh, unscheduled, uh, Schedule 2, Schedule 3 is classified as, as OTC or over the counter. Now this schedule, called Schedule 3, um, sits within that cluster, but there are some key things that differentiate uh, S3s from, uh, from S2s and unscheduled. And the primary differentiators are the fact that the pharmacist is involved and it's in fact mandated that the pharmacist in, is involved in every single engagement and the, the dispensing of the medicine, unlike S2s and unscheduled. Uh, but also that for S3s in Australia, uh, they are not permitted to be advertised to the consumer unlike uh, similar jurisdictions, unless they appear on what's known as the Appendix H list. Um, now, the unfortunate thing for Australians um, is that Appendix H list is pretty uh, light on. In fact, I could probably count on this hand um, how many things appear on that list in terms of what's permitted to be advertised to the consumer. Um, and it's been quite conservative, actually, for the last decade. Um, I think there's been, uh, again, on a single hand, uh, how many have actually been um, added to that list over that period as well. Uh, and that's for a variety of, of reasons, but I, I, I have to say it's probably the conservative disposition of the committee making those uh, decisions over the last decade. Now, that's unfortunate for the Australian consumer because it means that um, our Schedule 3 um, category is now coined, I guess, the uh, not so endearing term uh, as the graveyard zone. Um, and that's because um, there's very little activity going on within S3s. You can't advertise them to consumers, even though consumers can get them uh, without a script. And it means the commercial appetite to do much with that schedule is quite limited. And I think the word timid was used in terms of our switch appetite. And um, I think even that's been quite generous. I think we've been very, um, very uh, underwhelmed with the activity happening with S3s. And again, it's, it means that the schedule is under leverage and it means the consumer is missing out. Um, and of course, this schedule three zone is, is quite important to reclassification and we've just heard from New Zealand um, the value and the benefit of reclassification. But unless we can actually address some of the issues with schedule threes, when things move from prescription to OTC, namely being able to tell the consumer that they're now available without a script, um, we won't see many reclassifications in Australia. Now, there's a variety of other drivers as to why reclassification has slowed down, which Natalie has taken you through, but one of the big contributors is uh, the commercial viability around switch. Uh, it just doesn't make sense if you invest millions of dollars in moving it from Schedule 4 or prescription to OTC to not be able to tell the consumer it's now available without a script. So that, uh, that commercial equation just doesn't add up in terms of the money invested versus the product sitting in that Schedule 3 zone and then not being able to tell the consumer it's available without a script. So this obviously has a lot of knock-on effects and, and dare I say negative effects um, uh, as a consequence, I guess, of the status quo. One is obviously negative public health outcomes. We still have consumers going to the doctors for things where there is a viable OTC option. And that's unfortunate because it means that um, there's an expense associated with that from a public health perspective. So they're going, they're waiting to see the doctor and obviously uh, an impact to public health in terms of Medicare costs for where there is a viable OTC option available. We're denying consumers access to more convenient um, and, 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 and therapeutic viable options. Um, because they're not, about, they're, they're not aware of them. They don't know they are available, so they continue to um, book appointments with doctors, sometimes waiting days, and incurring cost and inconvenience when, again, there's something they could readily access from their pharmacy. It's not a great use of scarce healthcare uh, resources, and again, overloading doctors when there are readily available pharmacies and pharmacists that, uh, that are open to providing some solutions. Um, and as we talk about the consumer today and empowering them with information and making them an active part of um, the management of their own health, we are disempowering them by keeping them in the dark and not telling them what's available over the counter. 
And finally, Australia is out of step with comparable jurisdiction in, in this respect. So um, not great outcomes associated with uh, the current status of not being able to tell the consumer about Schedule 3 medicines. So uh, to address this issue, we've been on a, quite a journey. Uh, we, we're proposing a new way forward when it comes to Schedule 3 consumer communication, a new model, uh, if you like, in terms of how we communicate with the consumer, but we are proposing that we do uh, communicate with the consumer. However, we do it in a slightly different way to conventional advertising. So let's talk about this new consumer communication model. Uh, the model that we are advocating on behalf of the industry is quite different. And for those of you in the, in the communication game, think of an infomercial style format. Um, very different to conventional consumer communication or advertising. But it's based on a structured framework that ensures that information is conveyed to the consumer in a very balanced, factual way. And in fact, we're being quite prescriptive as to what we mean by that. And that is, the model we're proposing, um, if you think of a 30 second TV commercial, we're proposing that equal proportion is given to three elements. The first element is condition awareness or disease state awareness. The second third is around branded product information, so features and benefits about new therapeutic option. And then the third is around the importance of the role of the pharmacist uh, in that engagement and the role of the pharmacist in determining whether that therapeutic option is right for the consumer. So the model proposes basically the ad is made up of these three elements in equal proportion. So what does that look like? It's not just about consumer communication. This model is much bigger than that. And again, we heard from our New Zealand colleagues about the importance of the role of the pharmacist and the pharmacy in being ready to take on board an expanded um, role in managing some of these new therapeutic options. So a core part of this is obviously the consumer activation piece, but the other element which is important is also making sure that pharmacy is ready to take on board these new therapeutic options in a pharmacy setting. So a critical part of this model is ensuring that the pharmacy protocols are established and launched within pharmacy. They're done ahead of time before the consumer communication is launched and they're done across all pharmacies. So we're talking about educating and upskilling all pharmacists with, uh, with protocols, education, training, etc., at least at least one month, if not more, ahead of the consumer activation program, and that's a mandated part of this uh, comprehensive package we're putting together as this, as this new model. Once that is established and done, then we activate the consumer communication. So when the consumer walks into pharmacy, all pharmacists have the protocols, they've been trained, they've been upskilled, and they're ready to go once the consumer is activated with the new communication model. And this model is transferable to all media. So this is not just about a format for TV. We're proposing this equal uh, third, a third, a third model across all forms of above the line and below the line to ensure that balanced factual information is relayed to the consumer for, for these new class of goods uh, that sit within S3s. So, why is this good for the consumer? I think we've kind of heard the sentiments of this uh, today all through the different presentations, but we raise awareness of symptoms and, con and, and conditions and ailments. So starting to talk more about S3s and different conditions that different therapeutic options are available in S3 means that we're creating more health literate consumers. They're becoming more aware of therapeutic options that are available to them, and hopefully, the consumer communication is encouraging consumers to go in and talk to their pharmacists. These are consumers that may not actually be having conversations with their pharmacists. And I think the, the example of sildenafil in, in New Zealand and men basically not talking to healthcare professionals and then upon seeing an ad, Phil sildenafil, they're going in and starting to have conversations about men's health in general. Um, is a perfect example of the benefit of uh, starting to communicate with the consumer about S3s. It's also recalibrating consumer expectations about the role of the pharmacist uh, for S3s. And it's not a traditional consumer sees an ad, goes in, demands a product. 
But the advertising is really important to educate the consumer that actually, no, you know what, it's the pharmacist um, that will determine whether the therapy is right for you. Yes, absolutely go in and have a conversation, but this is a Schedule 3 medicine and the pharmacist needs to go through the protocols and the right screening, and then they'll determine whether the therapy is the right one for you. And I think the other, the other positive byproduct of activating the consumer and starting consumer communication is um, more healthcare conversations are taking place with the pharmacist, and that then offers the opportunity for more serious conditions or more sinister situations to be then referred on to the GP. So we're creating this, as, to, to, to coin your phrase, this triaging mechanism that may not have happened without the consumer seeing and hearing the advertising. And I think, again, you heard from our New Zealand colleagues as to the benefits for pharmacy and pharmacists um, with activating this S3 schedule um, and creating consumer awareness of this class of goods. Pharmacists are fully informed, particularly with the protocols um, that are put into place in advance. You're empowering pharmacists to manage those consumer requests with all of that upfront work that's done in collaboration with them. And we're leveraging the professional role of the pharmacist. You have a healthcare professional there that is under leverage that could be more fully leveraged given their, uh, their professional um, role within our community. For government, by activating the consumer and creating more awareness of S3s, we could potentially be avoiding doctor visits. I'll, I'll use the example of chloramphenicol because I think it's a really good one. It's used for bacterial conjunctivitis of the eye. It's available S3 in Australia. Consumers don't know that. It's been available for S3 for many years now. Consumers don't know it. So what happens? Their child has it, they have it. They go book a doctor's appointment. They may wait a day. They may wait in the waiting room for an hour plus. They incur a Medicare cost. They don't need to. They could simply walk into a pharmacy, see the pharmacist, and go through the, the, the right protocols and get dispensed the medicine where appropriate. Again, we're avoiding doctor visits where there is a viable OTC solution. Obviously, that time um, can be saved in terms of productivities. It's a better use of scarce resources and ultimately better healthcare outcomes for the consumer. And I think New Zealand is a beautiful case study for expanding access and creating consumer awareness of what is available OTC and the corresponding better healthcare outcomes for, com for community and for consumers. And obviously for industry, and it's, it's great to hear from, from everyone around, I guess the commercial viability of switch. Uh, but if we can resolve this issue, I, I truly believe that we will encourage industry to reinvest back into S3 and back into Switch because this is probably one of the biggest obstacles to having an appetite to investing in S3 and Switch, which again ultimately benefits the consumer. So let's actually move to, um, we've talked conceptually about the model. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually show you the model in practice. So uh, we've got a storyboard. Um, we've cherry picked an example, which is an existing S3 that is currently not advertisable, so we can't talk about it, but it's famcyclovir. You can use it, it's an oral tablet for cold sore. Consumer doesn't know it's available OTC. So this is what an S3 famcyclovir ad would look like. You have a third of the ad dedicated to disease state awareness and education. You have a third dedicated to branded product information, talking about features and benefits. And then you have a third dedicated to uh, talking about uh, the role of the pharmacist and why it's important for that pharmacist to determine whether that ther therapy is right for you. So go and have a chat to your pharmacist. And in fact, we've cut this into a mock television commercial to show you today. So if I could actually demo the mock ad that goes with this storyboard, you'll actually see the S3 model in practice. Bruce, can we run the app? You know when the tingle starts, that a cold sore is on its way. Now there's a new option available, only from your pharmacist. Introducing BrandFan, a new once-only dose taken orally at the first sign of a tingle. It relieves the symptoms fast and reduces the length of a cold sore attack with no mess. Talk to your pharmacist about your cold sore symptoms and they will determine whether BrandFan is the right treatment for you. Find out more. Ask your pharmacist. Okay, so what I'll do, I might just get the ad run, but I'm gonna talk over it, so pull the volume down a bit, and I just wanna explain the different uh, 
parts of it. So this is the first third, you know which is disease state cold awareness, cold talking about cold symptoms cold and cold feeling cold the tingle and go and speak to your pharmacist. We introduced the brand, very fact-based, features, benefits, mode of action, point of difference. And then the last part is the role of the pharmacist. So consumer going in, talking about symptoms, pharmacist going through the protocol, um, and then de them determining whether the, the therapy is right for the consumer. So that's the basic construct of the ad, very fact-based, very balanced, and very true to the model in terms of this equal uh, proportion to the third, the third, the third. So why have we cut this ad? Um, firstly, obviously, to, to, to show the model in practice, um, but we have been advocating for reforms in S3 advertising, and in fact, it went into our submission, um, uh, which uh, Tricia touched on um, earlier with the TGA, the Samson Review, which was looking at scheduling and S3 advertising. And the review kind of fell a little short in terms of uh, embracing the new way forward. In fact, it kind of put the onus back to say there's acknowledgement that S3 advertising guidelines need reviewing. However, there's not enough evidence to demonstrate, either positive or negative, that S3 advertising is beneficial to the consumer. Um, so we, as ASME and as industry, have taken it upon ourselves to generate that evidence. So we're partnering with the University of Technology Sydney, uh, the Centre for Health Economic uh, Research Evaluation, that's what that acronym stands for, to actually test that mock ad. We're recruiting a population of consumers, pharmacists and pharmacy assistants. We'll have a test and a control group and we'll actually show the test group that mock ad and we'll compare it to the control group to see what the impact of the advertising is so we can conclusively understand what the impact is of advertising uh, to those three groups to be able to go back to government to, uh, to I guess, bolster our position in terms of S3 advertising reforms. Um, we will be in field quarter one next year with a view to having results quarter two. And whatever the results are, they will inform the model going forward. So if we get some feedback on ways to tweak the model, obviously they'll be actually pulled and rolled into, uh, into the model before we, uh, before we commercialise. And, and until then, we will continue to advocate um, for the S3 model uh, that, uh, that we're proposing and reforms in this area. So. Um, I kind of want to leave you with a parting thought on this because I know I'm breaking my own rule in being over time. Uh, and that is that we stand to get no benefit from an ignorant consumer. We really don't. Uh, and this notion of keeping the consumer in the dark for their own good is flawed in many respects. So I really, really implore that we activate the consumer and we've heard a lot about this uh, today and amongst all of our stakeholders, so very encouraged to hear that. We need to activate the consumer and, and help them be part of their own health solution so we can lead to better healthcare outcomes.